Hmm? You think I should? Yeah. Lori well, did. So, Mwah. Ah, we're alive. Ha ha. We're on the interwebs. We're doing things. Subspace communication. Communication. Subspace communication channels are open. Real time live across the galaxy, and I can sit on your desk, and it's all, all advanced like that. Get off my desk. This is our impromptu live, isn't it, Stuart? Stuart, we're not meant to be doing anything. It's going to be a nice chill evening. And here we are instead. Well, that's what happens when exciting new things happen. Crop up. People can't get enough of us. I'm sure they can. <laughs> I mean, I'm sick of myself on a daily basis. Well, mm. you know something funny? So I was out Halloweening last night, and I got approached by a fan. <laughs> See what I'm saying? It happens to me too quite often. I mean, live in a club in Bedford, and I just get approached like, "Oh my god, you're the guy from Track Yards." I'm like, "Yep, hi." <laughs> it's like, "What's up?" And then his friend, uh, who I uh, only want to engage with, was like, "Wait, wait, you're a guy from YouTube." I'm like, "Yeah, hi." We're YouTube famous. Just to you know, shout him out. There he is in a police outfit. Yeah. Nice. What were you dressed up as? John Quine from Farscape. Nice. And that's his friend that knew me but didn't knew of me but didn't know me. Yeah. Nice. I just thought I, was, I did not expect that. I mean, with but yep, happened still. Yeah. <laughs> hello, Ernest. Hello, Raj. Hello, Thomas. Hello, Jonathan. Hello, Kevin. Hello, Ooh, Ron. Hello. hello, Xavier. Hello, everyone that's coming. A lot of manual hellos. <laughs> 25 people. Oh, I should you probably, probably share much more. Oh, probably. Hello, fellow Trekkers, says Iron Bassist. Brad Noble, I shot a zombie that looked like Trek Yards last night. Both of us combined? That's not a good face. Wow, that must have been a sexy person. Um... <laughs> yep, yep. Our babies would be beautiful, Samuel, if that could be a thing. Well, in the Star Trek timeline, probably could be. Our baby, our baby is Trek Yards, and it's beautiful. It is beautiful, People... yeah. And Fleet Yards, the slightly less loved stepchild. That's that's yeah, that's the that's the redheaded stepchild that we ignore. And the, and the top ten that we threw threw into the re reeds a few years ago, and just like yeah, you fend I yourself. Love that top ten. Well, no, people said though. People said do top tens live. Yeah. Hey. Instantly, it becomes a worthwhile formula, and it's something different. People can say their top tens. So yeah. So you vamp. I'm gonna. Post. Hey Brian. Hey or Tau Kawa Tenga. Yellow, 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 he says. Um Kala Caleb. Everyone, welcome. Uh still waiting for more people to come in here. We got some interesting stuff. Did you see this five second teaser on Twitter? Samuel's shaking his head, so yes. Yes, yes, yes. It's all yes, part yes. of the story of this of this it's been ever evolving news. And we've got pictures, we've got video, we've got exciting research materials. We are really loaded to the nines for this one. We've been researched, guys. It's all here when more people join in. <laughs> Bad Boys 3 is official. Just check Will Smith's Facebook account. Whoa, sweet. And Top Gun 2 is on the way as well. See? I'm saying that's some good stuff. No, you did that. I love Top Gun. Okay, Don't I be... saw Top Gun 1, too fair, in a car. But I was always heard it was an, an amazing film. And I was like, oh... Is this it? It's, it's so it's razor actually, thin no. of a film. It's really bizarrely like limited. Like How it's dare nice. you? It's one of my favorite films. And like, why? Why it? were they attacking the Chinese people? Whoever? Why were they in there? It just doesn't. It was not thought out to be a thought out film. It's like a look at the cool. But I disagree one thousand percent. You okay. actually got to watch it and understand it. Well, but that's beside the point. We're fine. not going to argue about that. <clears throat> But, well, but, Germany, but Bad guys. Boys 3, though. Hell, Bad Boys 2 is a superb film. Bad Boys 1, pretty damn good, too. So, 3, do it, man. Is Michael Bay attached I th to the I assume so. I think, third that's, one? I think that's part of the deal, yeah. I just like Top Gun for the plane. Yes, well, I like the F-14 as well. Top Gun 2, I don't think it's going to have any F-14s. Maverick's plane, what the things we've seen from set is an F-18, which is fine. It's like a little F-14 junior. And I'm still mad at the F-18 for replacing the F-14, but that's another story. <clears throat> uh, Top Gun 2, the zombie of Goose comes back. Hey, that'd be cool. Maybe he'll be like a vision or a dream that Maverick has. 
Captain George is here. Thank you, Captain George, for showing up. Uh, need a Top Gun at Starfleet Academy. Well, we've kind of talked about that in our fighter episode. Go watch Trekyard's Star Trek fighters. Uh, rest in peace, F-14s. They served our, our country well. Yes. F-22 is the future. Eh, the F-22 is all right. Better than the F-35. So, But we're getting off topic there. Uh, we got 118 people watching. Samuel's sharing away there. So once he's done, we can get into it. Maybe a few more people will join in. Uh, F-35. Yuck. F-22 is Air Force. Yes. Car Galaxy Studios, the last Transformers movie, though last night was crazy in its pacing. Had trouble with uh, that movie keeping up. Yes, me too. Uh, and it just was nonsensical, as most of the Transformers well, the, films The became. fourth one was awful, so I didn't want to watch the fifth one, honestly. Yeah. So. Didn't Goose have a son? Maybe the son is a Top, Gear, Top Gun 2 as a cocky pot. That'd be cool. That'd be very interesting, actually. What are those nacelles pushed farther forward like a bird of prey disruptors? Ah. Shh. We'll get there. We'll get there when we get In there. Moments. Moments, everyone. <clears throat> it's the I can make Star Wars doesn't... technology real. Oh. That's what Joseph says. Oh. Super Hornets have done a good job replacing the F-14s in the ones. They have indeed. They have indeed. But there's still nothing as beautiful as an F-14. Good old F-16s are my favorite. Oh, you're one of the Iron Eagle guys. I didn't mind Iron Eagle, but the F-16 is not my favorite. Ew, yuck. But anyway, the F-14 is like the... I'm not going to say it. Never mind. <clears throat> I was going to say F, like the F, the uh, Klingons of the fighter world because it's got two tail fins. Just like the F-18. The F-16 only has one, so it's just a human. I want to ask you, Stuart, before we dive into the Klingons, how'd your Armada stream go? Because I've, I've started watching it, and then we did the stream, so. Uh, it went well. I got uh, started the campaign, did the Ooh. first mission, just a little over an hour, hour and mm -hmm. 20, I think. Um, didn't want to get into the second one, because that would have taken a little longer. It's an escort one. you got to mm. transport supplies and stuff over to the other side of the map. Mm -hmm. So I'll save that for another one. But it's good to have Starfleet commit, or Starfleet. Star Trek Armada number two up and running. Um, I did download the fleet operations mod mm -hmm. for it, but for some reason it's crashing every time I actually get past the, the main loading screen. As soon as I go to launch the game, it sends an error report. So hopefully that'll get fixed soon. Well, it could be a number of things, couldn't it? Is the, is the problem. Yes. Chappy! Right, yeah, is... I, I, I was an Iron Eagle fan as well. But it's not... 150 though. Should we should we cling on it up? Let's cling on it up. Yes, let's go. Okay, so this image we're gonna is a story of this an adventure of these Klingons. So this picture was sent to me by a fan, and then I sent it to you straight away on mm -hmm. the Star Trek uh, Instagram account. And instantly, it's like, what do you see here, Stuart? I see very cool looking D seven ish type battleships, which now that we kind of know what's going on with them, make a lot more sense. But uh, at the first, yeah, first thought that went through my mind was these are Discovery. These are, mm -hmm. They're showing a glimpse of the Discovery fleet from what season two. What else would it be? Exactly, but but it is maybe something else. Yeah, let me zoom in. One thing that was also fun is that there's actually a... I don't want to be underneath the... There we go. There's actually, if you look, a little teeny, teeny bird of prey as well. Mm -hmm. Which was again tantalizing because we were thinking, obviously, wow, this is going to be a big deal if they've they've gone 180 and make both designs feel better. And while the D7 isn't isn't a perfect replica, it's certainly like 85% closer, yes. or at least 25%. Yes. So um, I then went ahead and photoshopped it. I mean, we saw it on it came out on Twitter as well, which I thought was good. I ended up photoshopping it to remove mm -hmm. all the text and to highlight just the image of the ships because that's what we are here for. And you got a sense of the... Uh, and Stuart, just have the picture up. I'm sure we'll just find a version of it. You can just look at it. But there's you know, a version of it which you can see that clearly, yeah, the wings are stretched forward. Lots of glowy bits. The main image, again, lots of glowy bits, lots of, lots of lights, lots of dramaticness. Mm -hmm. Looked pretty decent, to be honest. Yeah, they do, absolutely. 
Uh, and I do like the red glow. I mean, mm-hmm. it's very much tied in with the Klingon aesthetics, especially their uh, their interior of their ships. Um, but yeah, like I, I, I associate more of a green glow with the uh, original D sevens and stuff, mm. uh, just because of some of the glowing elements on those. But this, I absolutely I think, is beautiful. I, I like guess, the red; it's a nice tie-in. Yeah, I guess the link into just the the red culture, the red L cars and such. Mm-hmm. But it's certainly a, a good image, and I started translating this actually because this is my job. And the first word is Bortus, which I thought was funny because Bortus is a great character in Morville. Yeah. <laughs> but it actually means um, revenge. So obviously you think revenge is dis- dish best served cold, and I believe that is what it actually means. Mm-hmm. So we were excited. We said, Stuart, we'll do a live, we'll talk about it. What can we analyze? Well, I mean, there's tons of lights, tons of glow bits. It's, it was pretty impressive considering. And, and if they wanted to come in, especially considering, I mean, this would, this would fit the Discovery aesthetic because you've got the big bluey glows on the Discovery, which do which they've said don't specifically serve a purpose. The front grills, the like secondary reflector things, because reasons. So having overdone glows would make a lot of sense. Cool. Very cool. One hundred and seventy people watching and only nineteen likes. What <laughs> the hell? Go click the like button or the dislike button. We really don't care. Hit one of them. Just, but anyway. Uh, so yeah. So this would fit very well in Discovery. I think that'd be cool. Um, we did get that glimpse of the hologram we saw in the trailer for season two. So we know that these things are on their way. However, however, I was then sent this link. As you can see, Stuart. Suddenly, I found this extra great picture. It has all these extra like details. You can see all the extra views. You can see the the brilliant engines. You can see the glows. You can see hundreds of lights. And it's super clear. I was like, yes, great, we can talk about it more. But Klingon High Council on Twitter. Hmm, interesting. Yes. What does that mean? Well, uh, it, well, it, well, this Klingon High Council, whoever they are, <laughs> they, they took over the Star Trek Twitter account. They did? And completely replaced all the graphics, all the everything. It's quite entertaining, really. And for about an hour, they're posting lots and lots of propaganda. As well as linking to several other tweet, uh, Twitter sites. Uh, Plus, is like Hail Romulus. Yes. Um, and I've already seen a few videos that speculate there's a <laughs> Klingon Romulan um, uh, treaty thing for season two of Discovery, but all based on this information, which is actually wrong. But that's okay. Um, yeah. it, although that that being said, it could explain the the cloaking devices we see in discovery but but alas no and let me obs the chrome if it will let me do that you can chrome can't you is that, that going to be a uh no that's going to be a window share uh, yes a uh, display i mean hold on a second and then change how have we seen the ramians in discovery no not yet Oh, guys, and don't forget, too, that this is uh, Super Chat, so any Super Chats you give will definitely help the channel and help us with our, you know, our endeavors to bring you more content like this and stuff. So if you can Super Chat, please do so, and then we're guaranteed to have your comment or question read. There's a lot in the comments right now. A lot of people, we have, I have 199 people viewing on my screen. It could be more, though, because it always is on everybody else's screen, but that's okay. Um, So if you guys can, you go click the like button, do a Super Chat, whatever, or... Yeah, look at that. I love that hand grabbing the uh, UFP symbol. That's awesome. So these are the guys that took over the Twitter. As you can see, joined August 2018. Three following, six tweets, but a damn good graphic there. And this little picture of a Katinga, which I will show here as well. Now, this was when it started getting more interesting because this is a hell of a hell of a picture. But is that familiar at all, Stuart? It is very familiar. And actually, if you guys watch my Eagle Moss review tomorrow, I actually specifically mention this ship at the end of that Eagle Moss review for a particular reason. This is this is the uh, J.J. Abrams 2009 
Klingon Warbird mm-hmm. or Klingon Battlecruiser, even though there were no technically no Klingon Warbirds ever, but that's okay. Mm-hmm. It's a Klingon Battlecruiser from the JJ verse. Yes, uh, a fantastic design, a very mm-hmm. well, very well redesigned, reimagined redo of a Klingon Battlecruiser. I love it. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's one of my favorite Eagle Moss ships and designs, and the be- one of the best things that came out of the JJ uh, Abrams 2009 movie, even though it's only on screen for like two seconds mm-hmm. during the Kobayashi Maru scenario. Um, but that's what this is. It's a JJ verse D7 or well, battle cruiser. Uh, I would assume it's a D7, but yeah, there you go. Yes. Now it's not identical to the one for the movie, but it's very, very similar. As similar yeah. as you can get with it being whatever. And if I bring on the web page up again, so what this actually is is viral promotion, and it says the new <laughs> board, the new Bortus is ready for battle. So the translation is both. Revenge is Bortus, so that was a so the Bortus class. On top of that, as Stuart says, there's also several other ones. There's the Hail Romulus mm-hmm. page, and again, sorry for the lag, Stuart. And this again was started sorry. October 2018, has very few posts, well, has uh, 66 followers. <laughs> so again, great propaganda, really great poster here. The Romulan Way is the only way, with the pointy ears. And then another one called Federation United, once again. October 2018, two following, 120 followers, and this includes, as you can see, this JJ ship, the Intrepid, and this background bit of the, not Enterprise, but something of a JJ Hmm. Post thing. So now we have three Twitter accounts for three factions, all created in the last little while, all of which have JJ aesthetic, Mm -hmm. and it's the same Klingon Battlecruiser that was revealed by the Twitter, the Instagram, and that took over. So this is a new JJ aesthetic product they are doing viral marketing for, guys. Nothing to do with the discovery. Really should have made that a little bit clearer. Although mm-hmm. I guess it gets the hype up, I guess it shared quicker. But what this really is, are you ready? Uh, hold on, I gotta address Ooh. the super chat before we do that. Please do, please do. Chive Bacon put in five dollars. Thank you very much, Chive. Thank I love you. Chive and I love bacon, especially on my loaded mashed potatoes or baked there potatoes. Where's the cheese? You should be chive, chive, cheese, bacon, or chive, bacon, cheese. Anyway, thank you very much. Uh, this does not line up with the D7 in the trailer. Anyways, do you think Eagle Moss can do a TOS Dreadnought or TOS Saladin or no due to licensing agreements? Well, okay. First of all, this isn't the D7 that's in the trailer for season two of Discovery because, mm-hmm. as I just said, it's a J.J. Abrams universe ship, mm-hmm. and it's for a new game well, that's coming out. It's not even new. Here. Well, we'll, we'll get into that in a second. Okay. I'm going to answer the rest of his question first. Okay. As for the Eagle Moss stuff, the TOS Dreadnought and Saladin, which are both Franz Joseph designs, there's probably licensing issues, and I don't think that Eagle Moss will be doing those anytime soon. I hope they do. I would love to see them, but I don't think so. And we got another super chat. Oh, lovely. Jill lovely. Wright puts in $2. Hey. Thank you very much, Jill. Thank much you. appreciated. Uh, are the Logic extremists actually Romulan? Uh, they could be. I mean, they didn't intend them to be. If you, if you watch the content, it's they didn't. Yeah. Because why would Romulans want to commit suicide? They just shoot him. Very true. <laughs> true. It doesn't really work if they're Romulans. Are these ships from Star Trek Online? No, they are from a new video game, sort of new game, called. Dum ba dum ba dum 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 dum. Infinite Infinite Space. Oh, that no, was so going to be a great game. Nope. Star Trek Fleet Command oh. for Android, iOS, and Android. And here is playing gameplay right Ooh. now. Thanks to game user. Maximum Android oh, just good games. Yeah. See, I had no idea. This is very not searchable. There's only a couple of things. So this game I know was in development a couple of years ago. It was meant to come out around sometimes Beyond. And then Beyond didn't do as well, so it got it got delay cancelled. Mm. And then I and there's gameplay. And and you know, I guess you have to have a game out already for people to be able to play it. So I guess now it's in a place where they can viral market it. So say JJ Abrams Universe strategy game with lots of new ship designs and I've seen a whole lot of them um, previously because I was I was allowed to see a few things a couple of years ago a lot of prime designs, a lot of non-designs like there's the Kamari and Dorian Kamari there's the Tellarite, a lot of designs plus all of the um, JJ stuff and including Romulus design Romulus designs, Klingon designs, all sorts of cool things nice um, and I yeah. it, well, I gotta jump in oh, Star Trek Fleet Command. I was just going to ask the name of the, the game again. 
Yes. Now, Star Trek Fleet Command. Good to know. Good to know. Playable is interesting, but it doesn't mean. And then there is a there is a Android thing with reviews, but I've never seen it actually. So I'm going to search on my Android store if I can actually download it because I feel like it's maybe like an Me open. Too. Because I mean, I, I certainly would like to play a JJ game. Fleet Command. Yeah, I would. I would I'm not the hugest fan of JJ. I'm just, but basically, it's just because of the Enterprise design, to be honest. Uh, okay. Let's see. It's not available on mine. But there are reviews for it already saying it's buggy and such. They might have had like a soft release a while ago. Yeah, it's not available on iOS either. All right, so neither of our stores. But as you can see, it's a game with gameplay. And what's really cool is that they have a lot of ships. And for us, a lot of ships are good. And obviously, I've seen quite a lot of them before. And they are some nice, inter interesting ships. I mean, if I'll, I'll find a still, then you can catch up there, Stuart. Um, you know, they've got... Uh, well. uh, that's a good one actually because it show this still already shows um, the you know, the Rom two Roman designs they're clearly the same but different which is certainly appreciative. Wow, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. So it's 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 a a little bit not what we're expecting, a um, bit of a letdown honestly. Yeah, we were kind of excited. Like, those are the D7s for Season 2, and then Good. looked into it a little more, and was like, ah, oh, well, it's still kind of cool news, but... Yeah. Yeah, I love the way they did it, too. The viral thing, just kind of taking over, and I guess I guess they're getting ready to launch. I guess the glitchiness might have been fixed. Who knows? Yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, they, they, they've certainly interesting designs, and I know that there are a lot of good concepts that were designed. Hmm. And, 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 you know, there are canon, the Kamari's there, literally, which is interesting, because how can this game use CBS licensed... Because CB, Paramount doesn't own the Kamari design. They don't. Hmm. You know, Paramount doesn't... But, you know... Yeah, so, mm, interesting that. And the same as the Kira class, which is the... I mean, they could probably change them a little bit and make them different enough. Uh, oh, the USS Saladin, Stuart, look! One nacelle. Wait for that to catch up. Hey, stop I'm waiting to, to see make it. You yes. happy. Oh. Look. It'll make. There it is. Sweet. Rather than Kelvin. Yeah. That's cool. Is there a three nacelle dreadnought? Probably not. No, I don't know. And speaking of Saladin, oh, our episode will be out eventually. Yeah. Well, so now don't ask. Well, now convergence <laughs> is about is about wrapped up. That's that took a couple of. Our... Weeks of things. I'm expected out next month, probably. We, have, we haven't talked about our schedule yet, so. But yeah. yeah. But yeah. Plus, I found one or two new pictures for oh. the salad in episode. I need to rewatch it. <laughs> it's okay. No, it'll help. It'll enhance it. Okay. It's fine. Gotta That's make fine. the best best episodes for these people. Exactly. Uh, Saladin. Saladin. <laughs> uh, we always get the chance. Everybody wants it. Oh, Saladin has not become Half Life Three. It's been done for like six months, three months maybe. Done as in like ninety-five percent done. We need a new quality Trek game, says Brandon. Yes, we do. And this, I mean, you know, I, I call Adversary is a good game. Absolutely yeah, it's a good game. definitely entertaining. It's a good, it's a good time waster. Um, and in, so. you can see here the Brel, which is the reveal of in the uh, in the image what it looked like. But yeah, it's close enough. The JJ Abrams Brel design. Well, this is the Val. Oh, it's the uh, Vulcan ship with the Val. Cause, oh, huh. yeah. And there's another Romulan ship. So, lots of things. Brel cost isn't that a better pay from Enterprise? Nope, it's a different design. Obviously, iteration off it, but different. But it's weird because the game exists on iOS or it exists on um, Google Play from Dig Perm Studios. Has 427 things. There's some other pictures. Construct a fortified star base. Customize and upgrade your ship's crew. Construct ships from every Star Trek faction. You can see the... You know how weird it is that earlier today I played Star Trek Armada 2, which is kind of mm. the same thing. You construct the star bases, you build your fleets. The irony of this tie-in. <laughs> it's almost like psychically, I knew today I had to do that. Today, ah, you not, had to do I'm that. Not gonna say that. I'm not going to say that we knew. Because we didn't, but we knew, but we didn't. So, yes, you're welcome. Yes. But it's it's weird. There's, <laughs> like I said, 427 reviews for a game that isn't out. 
Yeah, 21st October 2018. The bug, the bugs in the game are so frequent will make you not want to play. Simple stuff like you want more ownership. Game is glitchy. Game is too glitchy to play. But how are they? How are they getting it then? Could have been like uh, like the game I mentioned earlier, Infinite Space. You could sign up early on to become oh. a beta tester, and they sent you the version of the game. I was signed up for it, never got a version of the game, yeah. unfortunately. And Infinite Space looked really good. It did. Um, this one, uh, this is the first I've heard of it, so I don't know. I would love well, to get was... my hands on a copy. You know, uh, Fleet Command, Star Trek Fleet Command. Uh. We would love to be, well, you know, you could sponsor us. We will definitely promote your stuff. But yeah, they probably a closed beta, I know, but you don't tend to do public ratings for a closed beta. That seems a bit strange, only just do bug reports and stuff. Devs yeah. don't care too many, bug, too many bugs. So everyone says bugs, bugs, bugs. I guess. Apparently it's... The 80... bugs from Conspiracy? The little bugs that take over... No? No. Apparently it's... Updated 29th of August 2018, size 88 megabytes. 10,000 installs. Interesting. Visit website. Hmm. It's their official website. Oh, maybe we can maybe we can get access to it right now, Stuart. Dun dun dun. Okay, this, this is a whole journey we're going on, isn't it, Stuart? And it's live for everyone to see. <sighs> uh, and thank you for all for watching. Thank you for the super chats. We got another one from Sean O'Brien. Thank you. Of two dollars New Zealand, I think. Uh, so thank you very much. No comment or anything left, which is fine. Um. So this but yeah. is user agreement. I was supposed to get the game since it's the only website of the game, but then you go down to the bottom and there's nothing that says you can actually oh, click on anything. But what do I click on if I want to get the game then? I don't know, but email them and tell them that Trekyard is interested in talking to them. Yeah. Do it. Do it. Do it now. I don't know how we would. Star, Stellar Trek and Stellar Patrol, two free games from gbgames.com, free on Android and iOS. Yeah, but they're not the best. I mean, honestly. Holy going forward, because we can't find reverse. Yes. There was a beta out in September, says B. Cluet. Ah. Well, okay then. Do it. Do it uh, I'll now. email them after the stream. Sweet. So just got the email. Yeah. But yeah. Good stuff. Um, I say it looks so... interesting. I'm not sure what this little game is. <laughs> if that makes sense, this gameplay is is got some nice visuals. It's obviously fully JJ. You got license of uh, all these different characters, Kirk and and people. Does it look similar to like Armada as far as gameplay no. goes, or? See, that's what I want out of a mobile game. I know it's probably hard to do. Yeah. I want some kind of ship combat that's actually ship combat. Like, you know, Starfleet Command, Star Trek Armada. Something like that would be cool on a mobile mm. device. But I think it would probably be very difficult to do. That's why they haven't really been done. So, Yeah, no, this is a, simply a microtransaction-y, you know, sort of game. I just want to still have an Enterprise, maybe. I wonder if it's which Enterprise, if they go as far as Beyond or not. Because I know Beyond is a little bit more of a... You know, like, even a, a Such Online doesn't use Beyond content. So I don't know if that implies it's slightly different licensing. Because these, like... This is the old Enterprise right there. With the less proportioned well, pieces. We got Joseph uh, Pedron in the chat that says... Um... Where'd it go? Right, not the best, because CBS Paramount will not let us do what we can. Sounds like he might be working on the project. Let us do what we can. Hmm. 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 Just saying, that's what the comment said. And thank you, Captain George, for putting all the links to everything in the thank chat. You. Much appreciated. Well, what I love about this is that they've got like, Norsecan ships, and they've actually had to develop... It like, says... Uh, Car Galaxy Studio says there are some download links in some of the YouTube videos oh. descriptions. So, sorry, I continue. I just didn't, I wanted to get that before it. Well, download link to the page I was already on that doesn't have a download link. Hmm. Uh. So now they are rebooting the Trek games too. Well, no, they're just launching a JJ 
inspired game. I mean, that's fine. Which is probably, you know, took them long enough. <laughs> yeah, there's a few people that really enjoy JJ. Uh, one of our Trekyards admins is a huge JJ fan, and he would absolutely love this. So, um, just because you don't like it doesn't mean other people don't. So, but yeah. So we, we've we've sadly come to dispel the the rumor of it being a awesome uh, awesome game. Sorry about that. But cool ships. Yeah, I'm really excited. Really Look at cool the ships. Pictures. There's so many good looking ships. And yes, we're playing an ad for Linux twelve six. Oh, go go away, Linux. Go away. Oh, so more cool. ships. More that's new sh ships that we can look at. Oh, Stuart, this is an interesting one. What? The Rettler Explorer. Now, that is very Discovery. I wonder if they had a deal to to include some Discovery-esque. Because why, well, why wouldn't you backtrack to some Discovery of style into, not literally, but having the weird nacelle configurations and such? Well, exactly. And I think... The 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 discovery aesthetic is very closely linked to the JJ aesthetic, especially with uniforms and stuff. So I don't yeah. see why that wouldn't be a thing. That is an interesting design, though. Very cool. I mean, none of these models Joseph, are very good, but you know. Yeah, Joseph Petrick puts in five euros. Thank you very much. Uh, use your anger, young Jedi. By the way, what are we watching right now? What are you talking about? Just joined as Captain was channeling his Emperor. Well, we're talking about the non, the non. The non-news. This wonderful picture that was not as we all hoped. Yeah. Some images were released on Twitter of Klingon ships. Klingons basically took over the official Star Trek Twitter. Mm -hmm. And people were thinking it was JJ, or not JJ, uh, Discovery Season 2 inspired oh. ships. Or a glimpse of the what's to come. If we just saw a D7T's. It would be perfect, marketing-wise, to say, Oh, look, look, secondary, you know, they do look like this, guys. Relax, just support us, please, and we'll we'll make Klingons like Klingons. Yeah, um, but it turns out it's actually for a game called Star Trek Fleet Command, uh, which is available on iOS and Android. Well, not yet, I guess yeah. they're still in beta testing. Um, but since they did that push today on Twitter, I think it's going to be available very soon because uh, yes. Klingons took over. There's three new um, Twitters that you can join. Uh, one's Hail Hail Romulus. Yep, Klingon What's High Council. One? And Council. Federation United. And Federation United. So go join those on Twitter and they will update you on what's going on with the game, I'm sure. And Peel did mention, yes, that there's there was this five second teaser released. Which because I mean this this wonderful image of the Cleon ships is obviously better than the game engine. You know, if you've just seen some clips, it doesn't look how many of this good. That's why we assumed I mean it looks discovery quality. Cool. But if you actually look at this um this teaser, you can see it looks more live action y. There's actual visual effects here, so I'm sure this is where the. This is where. I can't go full screen, obviously, because it's uh, a bit limited like that, but. This is where the clip is obviously from, and so we're going to get to see some sort of real CG teaser for this game probably the next week. Seeing a. Uh, yeah. JJCG for a while. Yeah. Yeah. Looks well, cool. Sure. <laughs> yeah. You obviously can't change the aesthetic, which is which is a problem. But you know, if you're making a JJ game, why do you change the aesthetic? That's what people want. You know. But speaking of the JJ aesthetic, Ooh. Samuel and myself recently got one of these, which I'll talk about in a captain's log. But check out the registry, USS Trek Yards, mm. NCC two zero one four one zero two thousand and fourteen ten. That's the year that Trek Yards was created. Mm -hmm. This was sent to us by a viewer. Who's kind of done his own take on a JJ design, and it kind of hmm. fixes a lot of the issues with the hmm. JJ design. But I just thought I was here. We we're talking about JJ look, and I really like this. And people say that I hate JJ. I'm not the biggest fan of the movies, especially the Enterprise. But I gotta say, the aesthetic can be done, and it can be done well. So I'm looking forward to seeing these new ships in the game. Yeah. Yeah. Me Ron too. Phillips throws in two dollars. Thank you. Uh, rather have the JJ Star Trek 4 or sequel to 2009 game. The 2009 uh, JJ Abrams or uh, JJ vs. game was actually really fun. I really enjoyed it. Um, I played it on the uh, PlayStation. And 
beautiful interiors for the ship. Engineering looked beautiful. It looked like it was hmm. an engineering room. Oh, that's, um, a, that's, a, but, that's good. <laughs> yeah. Um, but what would I rather have? Um, I'd like to see another JJ film. I thought Beyond was pretty good. I'd like mm-hmm. to see one that incorporates uh, Kirk's dad somehow. So but Obviously, they're both out, but, you know, that yeah. happens. Well, they might get back. Chive Bacon throws in $50. Oh, Thank you very much, Chive. That crazy. is amazing. Thank you. That's a fully loaded baked potato that time. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, I just saw a legit Saladin model, uh, same scale as Polar Lights oh, wow. Enterprise, 1350 scale, and it is gorgeous. Was going to give up on asking for a vid, but after seeing the model, I just have to ask again. The video is on its way. Like Sam said, maybe next month. Um, we haven't, we, weeks, we, we haven't, we've been really busy, both of us, and we haven't really discussed our release schedules. Plus, I got to go through the Saladin video again and a few more pictures to intersperse, which Samuel is probably annoyed about because he's got to edit them in. But we want to make the best thing for you guys. Mm-hmm. And this is going to be a really good episode, a really fun one, mm-hmm. and probably one of our most popular ones. So, wow, he's just, we, totally... we've, we've built up this, we've built up the suspense. Everybody's <laughs> asking for it. It's got this rallying cry behind it. So when it comes out, you better all share it. Better go viral. Yes. Better like it. Yes. Our first yes. million view video. I wish. <laughs> <laughs> it's the only Trek ship that has a full fan base, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But no, yeah, you asked about the, the films. Yeah, I'd rather have a Star Trek 4 than a game 2 because I'd rather have a Prime game than a JJ game overall. But yes. if Beyond is in the same tone as Beyond, just maybe a little bit more like the more interesting villain like just a bit it was on the right track that's the point they've all been you know beyond was mm. good make one similar but different story you can and, and cheaper make a smaller budget then you'll make your money back you know as i said before ratha khan's like the cleverest film it's the cheapest film yeah imperial frost productions puts in and yet there's going to be plenty of people bitching oh Man, comment just went away. That's why I hate the chat because it just. Uh, plenty of people built bitching about the rules will be everywhere on that. Thank you, OJL Gameplay, for this snippet that we're going to. Yeah, there's going to be plenty of people bitching about the rules will be everywhere on that one group. What? I don't understand. Sorry. People will always bitch, no matter what. <laughs> Oh, yeah, it's amazing. We get people complaining, saying we're JJ hate, we're Discovery haters and apologists on the exact same video. And it's like, wow, you both have very different things from our video. <laughs> or they don't watch it. Or, or that. That's probably safer. Yeah. Safer yeah. There. But yeah, so it's a, it's a, it, this sort of game, and I'm playing gameplay footage again, there's so Obviously, there's, there's maps, which is a hell of a lot of 3D assets to build it anyway. The fact that they've gone this far in developing new races, new looks, you know, it has to be. Familiar to the the universe we knew, but it still be all JJ aesthetic. So you know, if we if we get good reference, we'll have a lot of episodes episodes to look at these ships because there's a lot of new things. I mean, even just the small differences of you know JJ, not, uh, you know JJ and Dorian design to a Prime and Dorian design. Mm-hmm. Yep. I'm looking forward to seeing the new Romulan designs. I think the Romulans and the Kelvin verse could be really cool. They are. No, they're actually decently good designs. They're they're very they're more well they're blocky because the game has limited render power, if you know what I mean. Um, but they're very. They're, if they were, if they were in the movies, we'd all be fine with it, in my opinion. As a, as a you know one half of Trek Yards, and I would think that if I think the ships are fine, that's probably quite a good sign. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. We don't always agree. So this looks like this is the main gameplay that you can go between systems, build up the crew and stuff. I don't know. I don't know. I'm kind of getting a timelines vibe from it though. Looks like the same kind of gameplay as. Mm, well, mobile though, you kind of have certain like mobile where buttons are, how it feels. That's all always gonna be quite similar at this point because it's what it, it's what works. But yeah. I think it's still more of an actual game though because that's not. Like, timelines is a nice idea for me, but doesn't quite come together as an actual game. No. One of the best things I like about timelines is all the ships I have and the fact that I can just rotate around them on my iPad, <laughs> take screenshots or whatever. Um, Quick side question if you'll allow me. Doc says, Roman War Commander, how's it coming? Very excited to see it. Good. I did Good answer. Shots this last week, we have I think six more shots in the last 
seven days. I'm refining two. I've done a new city shot. That was fun. Uh, I was trying to put east. I was trying to put. I'll. I'll. Because it's no longer in the version of this of the of the, of the um of the video. But I, I've tried to put Easter eggs in shots if I can. I tried to put Starbug mm. from Red Dwarf as a cargo nice. ship in the background, but it was too obvious because it's this big bald thing. It's 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 a bit blatant, so I didn't able to keep it in. But it's fine. That's fine. <laughs> hey, Captain and Commander, what would you what would your ideal Star Trek game include? Samuel, I'll let you answer first. Oh, um, sorry, I, I zoned out for a second. Oh, I'm uh, sick ideal... of you, Boris, says somebody. Ideal Star Trek game. Oh, um, I mean, give us another Elite Force. Give us another tactical. Um, would be fun. And then, honestly, Armada was so good. Give us... There have been very, very good Star Trek games. Mm -hmm. There have. So just, <clears throat> you know, make an updated version of that with bigger scope, better graphics. Obviously, obviously, Bridge Commander, we can walk around the ships. Mm -hmm. Even if it's just, like, each primary room. You know, one mission involves you walking to sick bay and then you have to deal with people at sick bay and then you know, you're in a battle situation and and maybe you win but one of your crew members yeah it gets hurt you have to go to sick bay if you you could let them heal in sick bay or if you go to sick bay and talk to them for a, a minute they heal up quicker that'd be kind of cool you know so star trek online <laughs> well yeah but correctly scaled and yeah Ooh, let me pause on that that's a kind of cool thing um, I'm just going to answer real quick. I would love to see something like Starfleet Command Volume 2, but updated <laughs> with like all errors, of course, and that. really good graphics. And also be able to have like a bridge simulator included in that, so you can sit in the captain's chair and play much like Bridge Command. Um, that kind of overlap of games would be really good for me. So, And also, Joseph did get back to us. I'm a consultant and a beta tester. I've been a beta tester for many Android games. Oh, very cool. Thank you very much. Well, feel free to email us at trekyards at hotmail.com if you want to chat more, because I think I have to email the developers now. But yeah, uh, say hi at trekyards at hotmail.com. Probably some things to talk about. Absolutely. But I, I stuck on a, on a ship there, Stuart. What do you think of a, of this Norsican scout? This JJ Norsican scout. Wow. Uh it's very impressive, actually. Yeah. It's a cool design. It really is. <clears throat> yeah. Kind of works. Yeah. Well, I'm excited to play this game, game now. I mean, I, I think it's going to be, like like I said, like timelines or adversaries. It's just going to kind of... Well, not like adversaries. It's... Adversaries is very one-dimensional in its gameplay. In a good way, it's really fun. Yeah. This is more... No, this this is a lot like um, the tra one of the Transformers games on the mobile. Um, can't think of the name right offhand, but the same kind of thing. You got the map. You got to go and do, do battles or whatever, um, and it gets boring pretty quick, especially when you have to start buying things mm -hmm. um, to be able to play because you run out of lives. It's really quite irritating. So I install them, play them, have a little bit of fun, and then all of a sudden I'm like, I'm not interested anymore because you just screwed it up by having me have to buy things. Yeah. You can't you can't even regenerate points over time should you let it sit. Yeah. You know, which is just stupid. Well, it, it should be <laughs> like I that mean, just takes the fun out of it for me. I mean, we're so used to buying things like Armada and just 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 playing the game, having to wait for cooldowns and and pay to win and such. You know, it, it it's fine, but I always like the ones where you have to. I've got a game right now I'm playing where you have to. You can watch an ad to get a special currency that you then spend on big things. So you are able to earn the game money by watching an ad and you get to get, win the game slightly quicker. Everyone wins, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thomas Harrog, I know I keep saying this, but I'd like an answer. Are you guys looking forward to Calypso and what are your th theories? Oh, haven't heard you say that once. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I didn't see it either. Um, that's one of the problems with the chats. That's why we say that super chats are good. If you can, it would definitely get noticed. Um, but anyway, um, Calypso, I am excited to see it. Mm. Uh, from the previews I've seen, I think it's coming out on November 8th. Ooh. On, on space um, and it looks really interesting um, okay. empty ship, dust everywhere and he's in he's in the mess hall and he's talking to like a sensor on the wall um, and mm. it's it's speaking back to him in a female voice, so I don't know what's going on it's a thousand years in the future, I'm excited to see it I was excited mm -hmm. to see the first one with Tilly because I love Tilly, I was massively disappointed by Runaway personally 
Um, a lot of issues with it for me. It's clearly a first draft story. Well, it's an Alex Kurtzman story. You can tell. That's the problem. Um, <laughs> it's probably his 15th draft, but it's still Alex Kurtzman. He didn't let anybody else read it and give him ideas. But um, Eclipse, I'm looking forward to. The Thousand Years in the Future really interests me, and it's the fact that they're still aboard, or well, he is aboard Discovery. And I think this character is going to become a main character in the mm -hmm. show is kind of the vibe. Uh, so I'm interested to see how it all ties together. So yes, I'm excited for it. I don't have any theories really. Um, cause there's just not, there's not enough to go on as far as theories go. Um, mm -hmm. uh, from what I've seen in the trailers, there's just very little information, but it looks really cool. Yeah. I mean, we'll get there. It reminds me a lot of a Stargate Atlantis episode where he gets sent into the future. There's dust and sand everywhere. Cause the, 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 the sea has dried up and he has to get back. Yeah, I mean, hmm. that is a, is, a, is a clever, cheeky way of getting a cheap story, but if he's interesting character... Well, I, I do think that... I do think that these... So, okay, now, Discovery is not made for Trek fans, it's made for people. That's clear. But it's also not made for... It, it, you know, it, 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 it's made for all uh, CBS All Access, which means it's made for Americans theoretically, because they get their primary money source from Americans paying because Canadians can't pay, English can't pay. Now, Netflix gets it because, you know, they understand the value of seeing it worldwide, but it's designed for an American audience. Now, these these shorts are only available to a, um, to the Americans, which means they are only available to the Americans. So if you're limiting the audience from, we care about the entire world seeing them, to the Americans, which, yes, is their biggest market, but still, the world is bigger than just America, that means any information in these short episodes can't fully play into the story. They can't reveal a character, give an entire backstory in a short that no one else is going to see because that's just bad storytelling, unless they don't care and it's just for the CBS All Access people who are the ones paying their bills. So if this character is going to be a major character, they've got to reintroduce him in the show because it's got to be standalone as well. Tilly mm -hmm. episode didn't add anything to anything, really. It was just a little tale about her, how she's getting more commandy. Yeah. Uh, okay. You know, didn't by they being have bigger... treasonous. Yeah, but... seriously, seriously, seriously. So it had no bigger uh, gotta... consequences, but that's <clears throat> might. Yeah, um, there's a comment there by yep. Faybao. Uh, Please do an episode on the secret of Vulcan Fury. What happened mm. to it? What it what could have been, etc. I've actually done a full captain's log on that. Ooh. I'm putting the link in the description or in the chat right now because it's one of mm. one of the ones I'm most proud of. I was looking forward to that game as well. And since we're talking about games today, I'll throw that in there. So click the link. In the or copy and paste when you get a chance. Don't don't leave the don't leave the live yet. Copy that and go watch it later. Guys, spoilers still can't see the shorts. Well, I'm sorry, but to report on things, you have to talk about them. But you know, we assume that all they're meant for Americans, and those people have seen it already. Sorry. Which we can do. That's not yeah. reviewing anything. Yeah, it's very difficult when that kind of stuff happens. So. Okay, I'm back on the ship again. The Relta Command Tier 1. That's a weird... That doesn't even look... That looks so Discovery aesthetic, not JJ. Sorry, it's hard to find. Yeah. Might have found a good still, but... It's very, very Discovery. Maybe they made a deal to, to include it? That's pretty cool. Although... Kind of looks like a vengeance concept of the saucer hole, to be honest, to me. Hmm. Ah, oh, Stuart, do you see that the, uh, when we thought this transporter room was an insult, not really, but when we thought, oh no, they changed it so much, and then we get Discovery one, it's like, oh, this one's even closer. Ah, <laughs> oh, context. Not there yet. Oh, Hold on. Yeah. Context is for kings, don't you? I, I, yep. Yep, yep, yep. It is indeed. Mm. Yes. Looks, but what's the actual battle bit, you know? What's the actual gameplay mechanic loop? Well, if they're not showing it, that's a bad sign. Unless they're showing well, unless this is it. I mean, it depends if everything's on the 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 super small level of like um Starfleet command where it's just one on one that's all you have. Or if it's a grander scale like Armada's or if it's a grander grander scale and it's more like having a um Empire and, and such, especially if you can play like Klingons and such, because they're implying you have three races. 
Hmm. Interesting. Uh, A lot of those scenes from that video, um, the gameplay reminds me of like Birth of the Federation. Which I never played. I played it once or twice um wasn't a fan so i don't know it, yeah this is amazing how we we we, we tangented because it's not where we thought we we're gonna have this live it went from being about this this picture to a jj video game <laughs> i mean that's not where we thought this thing was going but going back to the picture they look very cool in the picture do. i do love that and the fact that the jj verse a reimagined universe its own thing i'm fine with that like I said, it's one of the only things I really enjoyed out of the 2009 uh, Star Trek film. You though another on screen for two seconds, yeah. and that's why they look. That's why they look so Klingon inspired, because JJ didn't want anything that looked similar to uh, the original Star Trek. Um, but because they were on screen so little, he didn't really have much of a chance to nick nick it before it got approved and pushed through. Um, and that's why when in Into Darkness to the Bird of Prey, which doesn't look at all like a Bird of Prey. Because it was him there saying, "No, I, I want something that looks totally new and unique to this universe." So, so you know, it, it isn't obviously that. So that the model of the the D seven herself, which I have, I, I got the minute trial specifically was. Mm-hmm. Oh, I don't remember where to put the magazine, but the Alex Yeager, who's very famous in the Trek community for doing, you know, all the you know, all the. First contact ship. It's a very good design at ILM for a long time. He basically redesigned this this uh, this ship, and that's why it, you know it looks so good because it's a very very conscientious upgrade of the original. Mm-hmm. Close yet far yet detailed and look like these are all gun turrets, which fixes the big problem of that. I mean, it really does. This is this is possibly even a better design than the D seven, like in terms of functionality. Mm-hmm. Yeah, guns there, like it's very clever. Now, then, if you compare it literally to the view that we got in this teaser image, that's not the same. But doesn't, still, very, very similar aspects. Well, sure, but if it, uh, this is why this image was so teasing because it doesn't actually reflect. You know, it hasn't got the the neck bit, which is one of its biggest features. It has the 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 underside is completely different. Obviously, the glows are all different. So if they're trying to tease us, it's like well, it's a completely different design, sort of. You know. But, it's, but then, yeah. then you've got this picture, which is the the big, big picture. Which again, I have to keep swapping the framing of the OBS to get it clear as possible. And on this one then, now obviously years have passed in the timeline, so these are all going to be iterations on a theme, that's fine. They don't need to be identical. But then compare that one, the bridge dome is, is different. Reasonably mm. so. Mm-hmm. It's now got wiring on the under, like the older ships. So this could, this could almost be a D6 then, possibly? Because it's still mm-hmm. got the, the cannons there. It's got the same style of engines with it being, although not identical. The uh, the angle here is is similar but different. There's different panel things. And the that bit is about the same or different. It looks pretty similar. Just slightly more yeah, details. Yeah, very similar. Yeah, but just more detailed for, for yeah, the... There isn't bits here. This is not there. Oh, the yellow bit. Yeah, so it's it's again uh, different but the same, clearly inspired by but not direct. Yeah, which is interesting because I wonder if they can get license to it, or or what not, or if it's just maybe an older version, a D six. Could be, yeah. Uh, Chive Bacon throws another five dollars oh. into the chat, so thank you very much. Crazy Chive. man, thank you. Almost forgot. I have a source for a quiet. Bizarre motor versus the loud version. If you want it, huh. want to do it, but you would have to reopen the nacelle. Yeah, I've considered doing that because those ones that came with the polar lights accessory kit are awful. Um, I should have went with the Tena Controls one, the all LED ones, which apparently look very realistic when they spin. Um, they're super quiet too. I would love to have that thing on all the time, but I mean. Uh, hit me up on Facebook, maybe. Um, send me a message. Maybe I'll see about that. I do have the ship assembled so that it can come apart, but it's the nacelles are the trickiest part for that. So I don't know if I want to risk it, but we'll we'll see. So shoot me a message. Thank you very much for that, by the way, Chive. So <clears throat> I find it interesting that we had a comment from the contributor to the game, Joseph. He said. Uh, if that's a D7, it's missing things. But he should know. He's played the game with these things in it. With labels. 
So is that a hint that it's not a D7? Yeah. It's a D8? Yeah. I mean, it'd be a bit weird to put the, the, <laughs> the structural stuff back in for a D8, but, you know, D6? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> well, it can't be a D5. We know what a D5 looks like. And there's even a D5 in the JJ Bridge Crew game that actually looks like a D5. Good job then. They stuck with... Stuck with the, the established stuff. Yeah. So, you know, very different. Very different to uh, what we thought. Yeah. But it's definitely worth talking about. And I love this breaking news stuff. It's really fun um, to have you guys join us and just hang out. And as we learn things as we go, uh, which is usually the case when we do talk to each other, especially during mission briefings and stuff, we spark ideas in each other and that's really cool. Um, to have you guys here as well is really awesome. I see bridge window, says somebody. Uh, well, ship, it's not that big of a deal, I guess. Because the D7s had the, at the top of the, the tower, there was like a little slit. So that's always been the way it is, so that's fine. Uh, I think it's an awesome design. I do too. I really do. Um, as you guys know, like I've said, I'm not the biggest JJ fan. Um, but if you watch my review, if you watch my model review of the the model that Sam just had, it's one of my favorite ships from Eagle Moss. See, the, the problem with the, saying you're not biggest fan of JJ, but I mean, JJ was a driving vision visionary behind two of the three films. But, you know, I think we both like Chris Pine's performance. We both like Zachary Quinto's performance. Yes. Both like, you know, mul- it, well... Zachary Quinto when he wasn't being an emotional whiny little bitch, but, but that was all because of direction. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So we like lots of things. I think we both like the space station reasonably. It's fine. Yeah, there, there's a lot of elements of JJ I like. Some of the other ships, like the three nacelle uh, ship designs that you see uh, in kind of <laughs> in the distance with the lower slung nacelles, those are really cool. I, I think, unlike lots of things, the JJ Abrams films are weaker than some of their parts. Yes. Because of JJ's putting it all together in this, all that doesn't quite work. Whereas Beyond, he had lots of good pieces with good direction and good scripting and it, and it being stronger than some of its parts actually had a real good vibe. So like like you said, this is one of the, this is one of the strongest bits of 09, which is sad because this is one of the smallest parts of 09. Yeah, exactly. But it's absolutely one of the best pieces. I think I think we both had that in our top 10 JJ things we like. I think it's pretty yeah. sure. Yeah. <laughs> And it's funny because my Eagle Moss review tomorrow, I'm going to tell you what it is. It's the uh, the new Kobayashi Maru from the 2009 film. <laughs> the model is fantastic. I love the ship design. Oh, I love it. I absolutely love it. I think it's a cool ship design. And that's one of the reasons I referenced that one because that's the best part of that movie is that like Kobayashi Maru scenario that you don't even really see. <laughs> and those are the things that like some of my favorite things come out of that movie. Um, yeah, that's a funny ship that one is. So I still, I still, you know, get my subscription that I've had for years. Do I have? have oh, let me see if I'm in the room. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, check and at, every Friday at noon I do my Eagle Moss reviews. So check that out tomorrow, guys. And at nine o'clock in the morning is my Captain Foley um, or Captain's Log. Tomorrow is a long one because it's all about London Comic Con, which was a great time. So if you're able to check it out, check it out, please. And I don't know where Samuel is going. So he has left me here with all you crazy folk. But that's fine. That's fine. Wasn't the freighter Kobayashi Maru like a long cylindrical thing? No, not cylind- cylindrical. It had like pods on the bottom, which are cargo mm-hmm. modules. Um, slash dot dash one two one puts in a pound ninety nine. Uh, just watched the Armada video. You boomer, you. <laughs> don't know what that means. We've just been sitting here in silence waiting for you. That's 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 great. Good. Sam left you to die, says Brad. Oh don't it, it, you're gonna ruin it. I'm showing it tomorrow in my review. That's fine, whatever. Yeah, it's a weird weirdo one. I like it. I really do. It's got some really cool aspects. The nacelles are fantastic. It looks like a tank from the bottom, though. Those look like tank treads. Yeah, there's very, very, very big things. 
Yeah, it's like the simplest model they've ever done, just because there's no detail in the 3D model. But it's, uh, it's like the most work workhorse that you could possibly do, you know? Yeah. yeah it's, a, it's a cool design. I, th I think it's great. And when you compare it to, like, the Enterprise from the JJ-verse, it's fantastic. It's fantastically well done. Uh, really? Yeah, the JJ Enterprise is a piece of shit. Are you kidding me? But at least the source is pretty much perfect. Because no, it's, it's not. It's just the, way, the, the way they rounded, well, the, way they rounded the edges is okay. is not right. Not from that bit. I mean, just the the feel of it is just it's just the refit saucer. It's it's at first glance. Yeah. But if you actually look, it's not. Well, yeah. There's not, there's a lot wrong with the JJ Enterprise. I'm not a fan of it, as you guys know. So. And that's why this fantastic JJ redesign fixes all the problems I had with the JJ Enterprise. Got the proper saucer profile. The engines are spaced properly apart. Yeah. They're not super huge. Nope. Nice and slender near the rear. And it looks it looks great. It's got the same profile, same stance with the yeah. with the struts, but that's one of my favorite views of the actual JJ prize as well, is right from the side. Sure, the nacelles are a little big. But it looks great. And as soon as you do this, it's like, nope, the nacelles are too close together. Stop it. <laughs> but this one's fine. So, I wonder if we actually ever, you know, ever got a chance to interview JJ and said, so JJ, you were in charge of designing, of, of, of getting the new Enterprise done. What made you go with humongous nacelles? What you was like sample nacelles. What was the, yeah, what was, what was the thought process behind let's make it? I mean, do, do you not see the out of proportion? I mean, is that not... He doesn't not, have a... It doesn't have an eye for that. Because Ryan Church, some of the early concepts for it had smaller nacelles, and they yeah, looked was, good. Let me find one. Yeah. They even had the right colors, right almost to the very end when they started shooting. And then yeah. they changed the nacelle color, the bizarre color to blue, because JJ didn't want it to look like the original Enterprise. Like, I'm sorry, what? They put you in charge of this franchise, why? Oh, wow. this is your resume for doing Star Wars. It was that you absolutely. Interest. That you absolutely love and didn't change the Millennium Falcon at all, except to put a rectangular dish on it. Mm -hmm. So, way to go, jackass. Mm. Yeah. Anyway, I know I know Star Wars wasn't a reimagined universe, at least. Although, I bet if you pushed a lot of people, a lot of people probably hope that a lot of people probably hope that it is now. <laughs> but that wasn't his fault. He did a good job with Force Awakens. It wasn't the best film, but it was a mm. damn decent Star Wars film. And then, then Ryan Ch and then. Where his name has happened, the other guy. Ugh. Abba Bab puts in two dollars. Says, "Boo, JJ, yay, Star Trek." Uh, I agree, one hundred percent. Yeah. Captain Foley, and yet they had an original unchanged TOS Constitution model hanging in Admiral Marcus's office in that deleted scene. Yep, which I did a video on way before, or wait, it was Ad Trek Yard started. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah, it was like the first year. It was really, yeah, I talk about that. That would have made things better for me. Just seeing that would have been like, okay, it exists. They've changed the design, obviously, because of the Narada coming through. They beefed things up, made it bigger. That's cool. But no, they cut out that little second of footage, and it's like, you just slap the fans in the face again. Leave it in. Oh, weird, weird comment. 09 and Darkness actually had some meat on their bone. Had some meat on their bones. Definitely mean Story or the Enterprise. I guess they had Enterprise, they had meat, but... Meat isn't necessarily a good thing. So, you know. I agree with Captain Foley. Abrams used the Star Trek movie as a precursor to Star Wars. Star Wars yes. Luke Fev... Luke, I can't say your last name because it's French, but you're on the Anti-Trekkers channel, so don't be insulted. Five euros. Oh, thank hey, you. Scott, just got here. So is this the pick of the new D7 from the Discoed Trek? It looks weird. What do you think of that one? Are you pleased by it? Well, we just had a huge discussion about that. It's actually not from... Disco Trek. It's not from Discovery Verse. It's not from Season Two. It's actually a JJ version, a JJ uh, Verse ship, and it's going to mm -hmm. be in a new game, a mm -hmm. mobile platform game, iOS and Android, called Star Trek Fleet Command. Yep. So we just have a huge discussion about that, talking all about that. So yep. you got to go back and watch this from the beginning, Luke. Yes, yeah, so we tell the story literally from like minute five. Um, yeah. And David A. Smith, uh, a. David Smith is the Connie in the Admiral's office is actually a pre, actually the previous Connie iteration. Yes. Yes. We knew that. But that would have made sense. I'd been like, okay, they existed. They they phased them out because of the the Kelvin thing or the Narada thing, presumably. 
and upsize them, change them. That would have been fine. I've been like, okay, it's still ugly, the new one, but whatever. Just... At least there's an explanation. Yeah. yeah. JK, please, not joking. Hey, guys, my first comment on your channel. Hello. Oh, thank you for commenting. Great job. Keep it up. Love the ventral underside view of the Klingon Battle Cruiser. Great design. Yes. And I do think the red works really well. It, it pops a lot. For better and worse. Yeah. Very glowy, though. It's like it's, it looks like a ship that's full of hot lava. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> very, uh, very anti uh, Matt Jeffries, where everything was self contained. Very limited yeah. things. I know that also um, when I was designing Horizon, I, you know, Rick said, Rick Sternbach said, yeah, we try to keep as few glowy things as possible. Just absolute bare minimum. Nothing should glow unless it has a distinct reason to. Yeah. So, you know, it's not for the sake of it. And yeah, but you think things that glow are usually important so people would target those. So let's make the whole ship glow. And they don't it's know true. where to target. It's true. Because one of them is just a bowling alley. It's just a neon bowling alley with a big window. Big black lights, you know, yeah. Don't do that, no. And just, just to jump back a step, I just got another donation for for Convergence. Yay. Just right now. from uh, Sweet. From uh, Richard Todd, 15 bucks now at 112%. $6,210. So I've had... So you hit your one stretch goal. One stretch, stretch goal, goal and we're... Yeah, and we took one more great teaser to come out, which you have not seen yet, but you've seen stills of it. Did I show yes. those? Yes. yes. That'll be tomorrow. Hopefully, to, maybe to 6.5, 6.7. That'd be kind of nice. All helps. Cool. Yeah. Thanks, Richard. Um, Chronoton in the chat puts JJ is greater than Ryan Johnson. No, hmm. I zoned out again. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. He's, well, I liked Looper, but it was it was okay. At least JJ has... I still, think, I still think he directed 09 well. He just didn't know what he was doing in terms of the Star Trek of it. And that's kind of important for a Star Trek film. I, I, I suppose, yeah. You know? Yeah, I've seen one or two things he's done which aren't bad, but now as soon as I've seen produ producer J.J. Abrams, I'm like, nope, not interested. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> but I mean, he's still, you know, he's like, he's like the golden boy, isn't he? He gets all the reboots, all the whatevers, all producing everything. Good for him. Good for him, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Michael Anderson. Stuart, what's all the glow bits on this non-D7? Because lol. What are all the glowy bits? I think because lol. Right? Because yeah. these are like the low riders of the Klingon. This 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 house, this particular clan, they they like yeah. adding the neon lighting to their, their rides, you know? Yeah. They probably, the, the warp themselves probably articulate so they can go low, like, you know, like Ooh. a low rider. Maybe they bounce. Yep. I, yep. Put the hydraulics in them, yep. That is what it means. Klingon barbecue night, says <laughs> Lady <laughs> Wanderer. Yeah, they're having a huge barbecue inside. Lots of Targs to roast. <laughs> Aw, Targs are friends, not food. <laughs> no, um, I will say, though, we've seen now the game a little bit. The graphics aren't, like, anything to write home about, but this shot just looked so good, you know, it looked so genuine, and definitely a more Discovery vibe than, than whatever, so I'm, yeah. I, I think that trailer would be cool though, I have absolute faith in the trailer, let's see how, see how cool it can look, but I, I, I did happen to get the images up, just, just we talked about it a minute ago, because hashtag lol, because we sort of talked about the clean ship to the, de to, the to death, because that is really all there is to talk about, because we've, we've debunked it. Debunked and proved, so good job us. Uh, but I have, even though they've officially apparently fixed it now, they've announced it on the Star Trek Twitter that it's for a new game. Ah, because every, everybody was going off the rails with Discovery stuff. Yeah, because no one. But that, JJ that is so while we were not doing relevant. This. You know, JJ is so not relevant right now. So why would you? You wouldn't assume it was that, would you? Yeah. Okay, let me have a. Let me have a look. See, that's nice. That is nice. Hmm. Hmm. Yes. Uh, sorry, yes. Uh, yeah, so th um, this is obviously a little bit beforehand. Hmm. <clears throat> Their cells are still a bit big, but they feel better proportionally. 
They do, and I, but I have to see it from the front too to see if they're spaced far enough apart. Because if they're tucked in nice and close, I've got the I've got the art of the Kel- art of the Kelvin timeline book upstairs oh, yeah. that has these in it. There's a few different iterations of the Enterprise. Some of them look fantastic. Um, this is one that I actually don't mind. That's the secondary hull. Well, there's that one too. But I got a different one. Oh. <laughs> um, the secondary hull on this one is shaped really nicely. Um, That's very interesting. And the neck, the uh, the the forward sensor thing isn't pushed yeah. too far out. So, this is amazing. Like as a process, I mean, I know I'm not very big on screen, but here's four, and the bottom one, the one on screen right now, that says the favorite. So this is where they could have gone. I mean, weird. I mean, just mm-hmm. weird, 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 weird. But I guess you just, you know, keep changing and see what sticks. But there's weird designs. Weird. There was even a point where uh, Ryan Church wanted the nacelles to actually glow from the inner power of them. That the exterior of the nacelle would glow before it went to warp. Um, there's a concept art picture of that right before a warp jump, which looked stupid. But so yeah, you go through some stupid ideas. But I mean, you got to make things new and exciting, so change it up a little bit. Yeah. <clears throat> and then you have the saucer. The top one's just the TOS Enterprise. They have a weird with the massive windows, and then I don't know. Yeah, those are the middle one's probably the best on that page. Yeah. Because then it sells on the lower one. It's just awful. And there's this one done by Tim Flatty, which was one of the very first ones. This is before it got all Ryan Churchified. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's very refit style though. <laughs> Not very original at all, which in itself is a problem, you know? Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Different you know what would have made the oh. best reboot Enterprise for JJ? What? The Disco Prize. Perfect yeah. redesign. Perfect redesign of the original ship. For an alternate universe. Yeah. Or Gabe Cornier's. Gabe's was really cool as well. What? Um, and look, Stuart, there you go. you got the, uh, the <laughs> yeah, the inner lighting engines, which is a bit... And this must have been pretty far along the development because, you know, it's against the Narada. Yeah. Yeah, even just the proper Bizarre Collectors look so much better. Hmm. This talk's kind of gone off the rails now, hasn't it? Well, we, 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 we talked about everything. <laughs> and we're talking about a game in the JJ verse, so I guess it does make exactly. sense. Exactly, we're tangenting into JJ aesthetic talky stuff. I can't believe you have so many people watching. I got 211 on my screen, so I don't know how many that actually is. They are, yeah, well, they are blue because they're full of water. That's the, uh, you see the big vats of water and the, the tube that Scotty goes through when he gets beamed into the water, which would kill him. But yeah, it's a brewery, and each ship, instead of their own insignia, because they all have the same delta, each ship now has its own flavor of beer that they offer to, you know, planets that they visit as first contact, you know. So they each have their own brewery. They're, they're each microbreweries, essentially. And the, the cooling in the nacelles, it's all water-cooled. That's why you got the fan blades in the front spinning the water. And, yeah. That's actually not the picture of the glowy nacelles that I was talking about. Yeah. I can go get it. But they do glow, though. Well, look. Yeah, I just and the, to me that looks like a reflection though, or something, some other light source. But these ones uh, have like a radiating glow coming out of them. Well, I let's maybe. see if I can find it. Hold on. Let me. Uh, I, I can go get the book, but let me just read that uh, for a second. One of the most obvious differences in Church's design is the larger, more bulbous nacelles. <laughs> On the original Enterprise, the nacelles had been a relatively simple shape. They had been restyled and given something of an Art Deco design style for the movies. So Church started to look at different shapes he could use to for themselves and how much it might attach to the main body. Mm. Mm. You gotta love change for change sake, haven't you? Nope. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'd have to go get the book. I can't find it on Google here. Well, it's interesting because this is an earlier version, Stuart. And proportion wise, eh. looks a lot better. I mean, the cells are still a little too close together, but 
like I said, even just making the Bizarre Collectors red is a huge improvement. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but that, I've been harping on that since 2009, so people are probably getting sick of hearing it. Yeah. I haven't read this book yet. <laughs> I really should read it, but not yeah. often do you want to read JJ stuff, do you? Hmm. Very tangenty. Samuel, scan the book or what you want to have there. Share the pictures and make an episode. Oh, we will. Yeah. Well, this, is, yeah. this is impromptu. It's live. Remember, live. I, here, I'm going to go get my book and show you the glowing itself thing because i got to show you because it's bugging me. Okie doke. Hello. So, back to Cleons for a second. Anyone have any... Nope. That <laughs> turns you off. Uh... Oh, wait. No, I do the... Any any questions for me, I guess? So disappointed he's on Discovery, because that would have been a good... Pretty decent design, really. I mean, it's, yeah. Even the fact they were forward slung... It's pretty interesting. Thicker connection points. And that bird of prey just screams interesting. Interesting, interesting. Or use the other camera feed to show us the book. Yeah, well, like I say, it's a uh, uh, random. Oh. So, there is. Hi, this is the book. Ah. I will just define the picture. Hold on. Well, I think we are almost, in this, almost at the end of this live stream, guys. So, any last Super Chat questions are welcome before we head out for the night. Thanks, guys, for... Sticking with us in this brand new announcement, which ended up being an anticlimactic announcement. But then again, new video game. And I'll absolutely email them during, well, just off the stream, so hopefully we'll be able to get access to the game. And hopefully the chap that worked on the game can uh, email us and have a little chat with them as well. Found it! Right. So they were going to emit light from the front and glow strongly at the back, as well as like a propulsion flame at the back. Right. And you can see how stupid that looks, right? Um, right. You can see the rings in the sh inside the nacelle. Right. So yeah, Ryan Church had some great ideas. Not insulting the man, but right. That's bizarre. <sighs> so it could have been worse, I guess. Could have been worse. I don't understand. I mean, obviously, you throw a lot of stuff at the wall and see if it sticks, but there's a lot of stuff you're like, that's never going to be a thing, you know? Well, let's just see what it says about it, actually. Hold on. Find the freaking page again. <laughs> All right. Above, Ryan Church concept painting of the Enterprise warp nacelles becoming transparent and revealing layers of internal energy at warp speed. So they became transparent at work. And what's the what's, what's the tech explanation for that? Do you think? <laughs> I I don't have time. I don't know. I haven't. I really thought about it. Oh, yeah. oh, it makes you ten percent faster, according to J.K. <laughs> like racing stripes on a car. Yeah. Exactly. It's happening. What? Sorry. Uh, yeah, it would be fun if M uh, Matt Jeffries could come back and and look at all the Enterprises <laughs> and be like, "Oh wow." Um. O okay. <laughs> Glad <laughs> I died when I did. Nope, not gonna say that. But he would. He wouldn't have much to say. Uh, yeah. But yeah. Any any final? Should we, should we should we do a final super chat goal of like twenty bucks and we can go? <laughs> sure, if anybody wants to donate, yeah. but people want to keep us here because they want to talk to us, so they're not going to donate. Uh, there is a slight. That's how that works. Uh, but look at the uh, the uh, where is it? The forward slung was quite interesting. I think they did. I think they pretty decent. <laughs> what am I looking at? I'm behind. Remember, hold on. Yes, forward slung. 
Because again, I'd really try to like, extrapolate on these pictures and, and digitally enhance them and all that stuff. Hmm. Mm. That's interesting. Yeah, it's definitely very interesting. I need to see a better picture. That's what I gotta do. Hmm. That's weird. So there was, there was stuff, Star Trek Fleet Command gameplay from eight months ago and then from one month ago. And those are the different ones we played or, and dif that we showed. That's interesting. So like I know it was basically cancelled for a bit and then... Okay, this is a decent image if I show. This is the um, current, I'm guessing, current splash screen. And it gives you a sense of the... So you said you haven't seen the Roman ships before, but there you go. This is the... The look of one of the Romulans. I'm, I'm very, you know, pleased-ish. The Roman aesthetic, although... I did sort of tell them this at the time. The, uh... They've got on Nerix and... In the, JJ, jo in the JJ timeline, which doesn't make any sense at all. Yeah. Joseph Padron, the guy that... The beta tester guy... Yes. But what do you think? What do you think that is for? The glowing square. Uh, what on the Klingon ship? I suppose. Uh. Well, they're they're engine-y bits. Uh... See, I think he knows because he's mm. played. So there's got to be a purpose for them. Uh... As well. Many things possibly. I need to. We, we need a good picture. <laughs> you know what I mean? These, these aren't really good enough. But I mean, you can see it's an underslung grill thing. So it either implies a Passard could be an engine, could be for reverse thrust. Hmm. So it certainly looks similar to the impulse drives from the back. It's very standoutish. It could be a, a very, very brightly lit like shuttle bay, like an impulse Star Destroyer. <laughs> you know? It's like, leave my squadrons. You're being brightly top lit. By very 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 bright things, but no, this this um this Romulan ship. What do you think? And ignore the Nerixon, which is you know hundreds of years earlier. I'm really annoyed by that because they shouldn't have it, obviously. Well, hold on, I gotta see it first. It glows because they like Gears of War heat dispensers. Well, just yeah, heating the... heating elements. Um. Oh, those are interesting. Very Romulan esque. Mm hmm. Hmm. I don't know. Actually, the Twitter, um, Hail Romulus, has uh, the banner art has some ships mm -hmm. as well. Um, yep, which yep, look yep. really cool. I have those right here. And yeah, Joseph said it was a deflector dish. So, simple. Yeah. Interesting. This is the Romulan ship. Again, quite blocky, but that's just limited. Uh, limited amount of polygons you can do. Yeah, it's cool. It's certainly cool. So, there we go, yes. Yeah, they kind of have a Vasa Romulan ship vibe. Hmm. Which is neat. The captain is late for dinner. Someone pay Cockings already so the captain can be off the hook. <laughs> yes. Are you late for dinner, Stuart? No. Okay. I haven't eaten, but... I'm hungry again. I really shouldn't have had dinner. I'm hungry again. Um, 25% difference is Bird of Prey 5. Early scout designs is the Car Galaxy Studios. Hmm. Now, if that's a what if Andrew Probert had to work with Lego variant. <laughs> 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 I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a decent design. It really is. And it's a nice. Yeah, no, I, I give it all credit for for what it's trying to be. And, and Joseph, the beta tester guy, says one of you guys are in Colorado, correct? No. I'm in London, Ontario, Canada. And I'm in the UK. Yes. But I can get to London, if that helps. <laughs> Two different Londons. Yeah. But at least at least these these um Roman ships look more like the JJ more look more like 
prime ships than JJ would have allowed. If that makes sense. Like, he wouldn't have allowed such real looking ships. You just know it wouldn't have. Be like, no, 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 Romulans. Um, they're purple, 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 or black. Yeah. And they should look like a penguin. Because we've already made the uh, Klingon war, warbird, which I didn't really approve, green. So that's got the Romulan color. So, yes. Yes. And JK throws in two euros and says, Kapla. Kapla so thank you very much. Kapla. Oh, an ad for Car Guru. You're welcome, Car Guru. Uh, let's see. Is there anything else interesting in this? Well, that's a lot of people. That's a lot of like fleet people. Hmm. Thoroughly intrigued as to what this game really is about. Interesting. That is not interesting. But yeah. So yeah, guys. Sorry, it was not a Klingon ship for discovery. We hoped it was. It's not. But that's okay. We did. We saw. A clo I mean, to be fair. The things we see in Discovery might be better. You know, like more Cleon esque than than this because we did see a D seven looking and it was like oh, it's like a D seven mm -hmm. mostly. Mm -hmm. Fingers crossed and all that jazz. Yeah. But yeah, thank you guys for watching and hopefully we entertained you. Got to the bottom of this live, so you guys apparently before they changed stuff on Twitter. So there you go. We got that little caveat that we were. Mm -hmm. Nailing this down before that happened. So anybody watching later can know that we started this before that got fixed. Which is what it is. Yeah. So cool, thank cool, you cool. to Samuel. He did a lot of the research for this, so much credit has to go to him. Welcome. Welcome. Uh, even translating the Klingon. Eh. Gotta do it sometimes, don't you? In your life. Right. All right, well, I guess we'll call that a wrap. An hour yeah. and a half's good. Mm -hmm. uh, so thank you very much, guys, for tuning in. Anybody that super chatted, double thank you to you. That's very appreciated. It really helps out the channel and uh, helps us to come back and see you guys on a regular basis. Yeah, and Joseph, do email us because that could be useful. And I'm going to email the uh, game company in a moment. Awesome. And if we get to play it, we might have to do a little look-see. Because we can, boy, we can review Starships. We can. It's our thing. Right. See you guys soon. And don't worry, we are doing Discovery. We watch this very, very soon. But e everything has been stopping us. Literally <laughs> everything. Every, everything. So it's not been. I think it's the universe's way of telling us we shouldn't be watching Discovery. I, I don't know. I mean, I, I'm, I've got the Blu-ray ordered. It will arrive November 19th. So almost almost caught up with that. <laughs> and then I want to look at. I'm going to start watching behind the scenes. And I want to like. If there's a specific something that said I want to. You know, come back on live with you, Stuart, and say, ah, oh, but in the season one, episode one commentary, they said this, Stuart. Ah. I don't know. Breaking news behind the scenes. Great. If you're interested. Sure. Okay. Let us know. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you very much. And we'll see you guys very soon. All right. Bye. Thanks, guys.